by supporting something that seems quite insignificant and small is actually going to make a massive impact on your garden care and the time you spend in your garden and how you spend it. And welcome to this week's Natural Gardening Live with me, Josie Rainbird, your natural gardening coach. Today we're talking about the soil, how the soil supports your garden and how you can support your soil to keep your garden happy and healthy. Did you know, did you know, did you know there's an entire ecosystem living in your garden? In your garden soil, sorry. Well, in your garden as well, but in actually just in the soil in its own. I could talk about this for days. Honestly, the soil is so important to the garden and it's so underrated, so I could talk about it for days, but I'll keep it short for you, I promise. I'll pro well, I'll do my best anyway. Did you know if you support this ecosystem, it's going to make much more, much more, much less effort and work for you in your garden and um, take out a lot of the garden care needed as well. So by supporting something that seems quite insignificant and small, is actually going to make a massive impact on your garden care and the time you spend in your garden and how you spend it. So, so what we're talking about today, I hope you enjoy. The soil ecosystem is broken down into mini beasts, if you like, so insects, invertebrates, that sort of things, like worms and things, bacteria and fungal spores and things, fungals. So these all work quietly in the background in the soil to um, keep your garden happy and healthy. You might probably recognise quite a few of the ecosystems, so most of them you can see. It's things like worms, earthworms, um, wood lice, um, millipedes, things like that, insects that you can see and you will see in your garden on a day-to-day -day basis. But a lot of the ecosystem you will not see, completely invisible to like the naked eye. You only see it under a microscope or yeah, magnifying glass at the very, the very least. So a lot of them you can't see. So like a lot of things, they're outside, they're out of mind. We don't think to support them. Every member of the soil ecosystem, they work in different ways. So they can be breaking down the organic matter in the soil and the soil particles to release nutrients for your plants, saving you time on feeding later on, if you support them. They will protect your plants from any soil-borne pests that might look to eat the roots of your plants. The insects and the... Um, bacteria and things working in the ecosystem in the soil will actually protect against those if they're supported. So that's a good reason on its own. But yes, they look after your, pet, your plants from pests and diseases. They will help feed your plants as well, which is amazing. How do we actually support this ecosystem? This is so important. We kind of need, need to know how to look after them so that they can help look after our garden for us. Knowing your soil is a good place to start. Some of the people, the gardeners that I've spoken to, think that they know their soil, but they haven't actually taken the time to know their soil. They, they think they've got stony soil, they think they've got clay soil, anything like that, but they don't actually take the time to understand what's going on in their soil, what type of soil they've actually got. And knowing that in different parts of your garden, your soil might be different as well. So this is an incredibly useful piece of information to have. And I know I've mentioned it before. I know I have. And I know I've done lots of videos on it before. So yes. But yes, so knowing the type of soil that you've got is a really good place to start. So by knowing that, you can understand what kind of insects are living in the soil, in the ecosystem, as part of the ecosystem, and where you need to go to improve it. Try not to disturb the soil too much. Every spadeful you turn over in the garden, every patch you rotate, it disrupts the soil structure and it will um, damage the ecosystem living within the soil. So as you can imagine, before they can start doing what they do, they need to then regroup, heal, um, sort themselves back out again, get the community back going, and then they can start supporting your garden again. So every time that you dig your garden over, you think you're conditioning it, you think you're making life easier for you digging the garden, you think you're breaking up the soil structure, and that's a good thing. Actually, actually, I hate to say it, it makes work for you in the long run, because every time you do that, you're damaging the ecosystem, you're... Yeah, okay, you may condition the soil where you're doing it, but they have to recover before they can do anything with that stuff that you're putting in the soil. So try not to dig your garden too much if you can. And if you are digging your garden, try and only dig where you're going to plant. For years and years and years, um, even myself in, in our gardens, you just dig as a natural, you just do, you dig your garden over. That's what you do. But understanding how the ecosystem actually supports the garden and understanding what effect that has on the ecosystem and your soil gives you the reason why not to do it. And it saves you work as well, because if you don't need to do it, why, why do it? So, condition the soil. Condition the soil with a good dose of organic matter. Now, organic matter could be well-rotted manure, homemade or even store-bought compost. Um, you can get 
roll rot in your own bags from the garden centres, leaf mould you can make yourself, anything like that, organic matter. This is the stuff that the ecosystem in your soil will live on. This is the stuff that will support it and help it thrive. So by giving it this instead of, I don't know, chemical feeds and things like that, this is the stuff that's going to be what it actually needs rather than it has to process it to create what it needs. So by conditioning soil with organic matter, you're going to cut the work down for them so much. You're going to give them the material to, for them to break down, to release all the nutrients, and it's going to improve the soil structure as well at the same time. So organic matter, really good way of conditioning your soil. Um, if you want to see, I've, I've got loads of videos going. So at the end, I will link my playlist to this. Um, it's like a soil care playlist that I've got on YouTube. It's got all my videos to do with conditioning soils, the soil ecosystem, how to improve your soil and things like that. All of that side of things. So there's going to be more specific and more sort of guidance for you when it comes to caring for your soil. Hey, this has helped open your eyes to the importance of the soil ecosystem to your garden and how it can actually help support and help your garden stay happy and healthy. Saving you time, saving you money and helping create time for you to relax and actually enjoy your garden rather than working in it all the time. So as we come into spring, start paying attention to your soil. Start making um, less work for yourself and start creating a decent foundation for your garden. Look at your soil and see what type of soil you've got, how you can condition it, and if you can see some of the insects that are living in your soil, to try and identify what the ecosystem's doing. And then, yeah, see if it needs to be conditioned or improved. If it doesn't, then that's fine, leave it alone. Just try not to dig it over too much. Simple. But yeah, try this year, as we come into spring, try and make the foundations stronger and more efficient, and then see if it saves yourself time in the long run. So, hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got any questions, keep posting and I will pick them up as I see them and I'll answer away and I'll see you all next week. See you later.